Hello friends, welcome back to VLSI Fab. Uh, in this video, I will explain what is Q and why it is so important. Uh, this video is for MTech student and also for those who are trying to get jobs in VLSI or electronics domain because in general this is the most favorite topic of the interviewers. If you watch this video till last, I guess you will be able to answer what is Q, why is Q, what are the different reasons for Q, how can power supply contribute to SKU? How setup hold effect due, due to the SKU? And what is positive and negative SKU, useful SKU, etc. So let's start the video without wasting time. So before going to SKU, uh, I think all of you have some basic idea of setup and hold time. If not or forgot uh, some basics, you can check in my previous videos of VLSI Fab. Okay, so skew. Uh, skew is nothing but the difference between the arrival of the same edge of a clock signal at the clock pin of capture and launch clock. Okay, let's check this diagram. So, in this diagram, suppose there is a launch clock, that is FF1, correct? And there is a capture clock, that is FF2. Suppose a uh, clock is coming from some PLL, okay? clock is coming from some PLL okay and suppose it is <coughs> getting diverse at this point and from one branch is going to the launch clock and another branch is going to the capture clock okay so ideally the clock should reach clock pin of all the flip-flops present in a design at the same time that means I, I want to say that the time taking from this point to this point and time taking from this point to this point ideally should be equal but in the real case what we can see is that uh, the time taking from this um, like these are the time taking from this point to this point and time taking from this point to this point is not equal because there will be some uh, there will be some clock buffers or some interconnect delays or some other uh, external factors might be there which will uh, take some additional delays and so that will bring the additional delays in the capture path okay so what happens suppose this branch is taking one ns this branch is taking one ns and uh, suppose this branch is taking 3ns so the skew will be 3 minus 1 that is 2ns so this 2ns is nothing but a skew okay so the difference between the arrival of the same edge of a clock signal at the clock pin of a capture and launch clock that's what i wanted to mean that uh, this is taking 1ns and this is taking 3ns so the skew will be 2ns so anyways uh, like uh, the skew should be 0 but it is not possible as I already told right so we'll discuss all the reasons of skew in my upcoming slide anyways so friends uh, what are the reasons for skew correct so there are some reasons because of which uh, we have different skews across the chip Suppose first reason is one flip-flop is placed near to the clock and another flip-flop placed far away from the clock source. Okay, So in the diagram you can see suppose uh, this flop is somewhere sitting here. Okay, So what will happen? This path we need to traverse more. Correct? And uh, to adjust the setup or hold we have to adjust the, we have to give some add some clock buffers correct in the path so additional of clock buffers might increase the skew in this path might, might increase the latency in this path okay so if the latency will increase in this path so skew will increase because this number will be co is constant suppose this is earlier it is 10 then it is 20 and suppose it is 30 now it is 30 ps uh, taking okay the delay is taking suppose 30 ps so earlier the skew was <coughs> so earlier the skew was what uh, 20 minus 10 
10 PS but now skew will be 30 minus 10 that is 20 PS so the skew will increase so next reason is interconnect length as I showed you in the same diagram if uh, if the flip-flop will suppose move here then definitely this interconnect length all will also increase correct and earlier suppose uh, the uh, earlier the interconnect length was suppose this correct and suppose this was giving you somewhere somewhere around 10 ps delay now it might give you the 20 ps delay so what will happen this will also add the latency and it will uh, it will hurt you in the skew okay next will be pvt conditions so what happen exactly is pvt conditions are like process voltage and temperature uh, so these are not constant across the chip actually so what happens sometimes uh, we might have different PVT conditions in launch path and uh, capture path so what happen so delay may vary according to the PVT conditions and uh, accordingly skew may vary uh, in uh, skew may vary in the because of the PVT conditions uh, that PVT conditions uh, like how it varies according to the PVT conditions uh, if you want to in want to know more in the details i may make a, a separate video on this also so guys before going to understand skew in some more details let's understand few terms uh, first which will under help in understanding the upcoming slides first one is local skew let's go to the diagram okay so uh, these are the two flip flops ff1 and ff2 so you can see uh, the latency difference between the two flip flop is like suppose i will okay let me draw suppose this is a 10 ps okay this all the clock buffers suppose it is taking 10 10 ps okay all the clock buffers are taking 10 ps so you can see first ff1 will take 20 ps correct and uh, ff2 will take 1 2 3 4 40 ps so correct so the local skew will nothing but the difference between this ff1 and ff2 that will be 20 ps correct so <coughs> next what is global skew so the clock difference like clock latency difference between the two non related flip flops okay suppose this is ff1 and ffn these are the two non related uh, flip flop so difference between the two non related flip flops or the difference between the longest clock paths and the shortest clock paths in a design is called global skew okay so ff1 suppose is the it is the long uh, shortest uh, shortest latency uh, clock path and ffn is suppose the longest clock path so the delta difference between the time of arrival is called the global skew so suppose then what will be the global skew in this case this is i already told this will take two clock inverters so uh, clock buffers so it is 20 ps and here one two three four five six so it will be 60 ps so the global skew will be 60 minus 20 that will be 40 ps so global skew will be 40 ps and then one more term is there that is called useful skew what is useful skew now one sec so useful skew is purposely added in the design to meet the timing especially in the clock parts where timing is failing so that the timing uh, is passed in that path so but the useful skew cannot be added blindly this needs to be done carefully by making sure that the margin is available in previous and the next timing path so uncontrolled addition of uh, skew can lead to more timing violations even instead of fixing them so it can be used to fix both setup and hold so in our next slide I will discuss what is positive and negative skew and how we can use this positive and negative skew for setup and hold violations 
hi friends so next part uh, i will be discussing what is positive skew what is negative skew and how this uh, useful skew can be used to fix the setup and hold timing so and also we will discuss the interview questions related to skew and also some other terms uh, that will be useful for the skew analysis we will be discussing in my next part uh, till then if you have any suggestion or any uh, other topics you want to discuss uh, you just comment it out in the comment section and uh, please uh, like share and subscribe VLSI fab for the upcoming videos thank you